Soon after we got married, my husband David needed a haircut. We were both juniors in college and therefore had no money to speak of. My mom had always cut my dad's hair, so I thought this would be a great way for us to save some cash. So I cheerfully set up a stool outside, grabbed the clippers and scissors, and butchered his hair. The only solution at that moment was a buzz cut. But the long-term solution was outsourcing. I never cut his hair again. And that is one reason we're still happily married today. This is the How She Moms podcast, where we talk about how different moms solve the same problems. I'm Whitney Archibald, a mother of five children myself. I collect ideas so you can pick and choose what works for you and your family. Outsourcing is a weirdly fraught topic for moms, partly because of cultural expectations of what we should be doing, partly because of gender stereotypes, partly because of whatever our own mothers did, but maybe even more because of the pressure we put on ourselves to do everything and be everything to everyone. And then there's the cost. We think, maybe outsourcing works for moms with a certain income. Wouldn't that be nice? In this episode, we'll talk a bit more about some of the barriers to outsourcing, and then we'll talk about creative ways moms outsource all sorts of jobs on all sorts of budgets. We all have preconceived notions of what we should be doing as moms, whether that's cooking healthy gourmet meals every night, creating Pinterest-worthy crafts with our kids, getting down on the floor and playing with our kids, or keeping an immaculate house. Once we realize we can't do it all and really don't even want to do it all, we may feel guilty or inadequate. This guilt affects moms in all different working situations. Those who mom full-time, those who have another full-time job in addition to their mom gig, and the ever-growing area in between. Many moms feel like hiring someone to help clean, babysit, or anything else is like admitting defeat, admitting they can't manage everything on their own. In fact, you probably already outsource more than you realize. Laura Vanderkam, an author and time management expert and co-host of the podcast The Best of Both Worlds, way back in episode eight of her podcast. Unless you are sewing all your own clothes, you have chosen to outsource that to factories that make clothes. Unless you are growing all your food from scratch, like on a farm, you are outsourcing to farmers. You are probably outsourcing your package delivery, like you are not taking your letter yourself and driving it to Wisconsin. Like everybody outsources stuff. It's just that we have more issues around outsourcing stuff within the house. Laura, a writer and mom of five, and her co-host, Sarah Hart Unger, who is a physician and mom of three, are both outsourcing experts. And they share so many great ideas in this episode. I'll link to it in my show notes. Another barrier to outsourcing is feeling like it seems wasteful or even entitled to hire someone to do something you can do yourself. This is how Monica Packer, host of the podcast About Progress, felt for a long time. Here's a clip from her episode entitled, Yes, You Can Outsource Your Normal Life. As a stay-at-home mom, I would never consider outsourcing things for a very long time. And that's in thanks to how I grew up with really hardworking parents. Both of them were, um, they grew up in, in households where their uh, dads were farmers and my dad's dad was also a teacher and they did everything themselves. So I definitely am not slamming my parents at all. But my entire life, they never outsourced anything from yard work to repairs in and outside of the home to building patios, fixing um, rain gutters. My dad almost lost his finger doing that once, cleaning the home. And anything you can think of, they never, ever outsourced them. So when I was a young mom and I noticed that other women around me had house cleaners or yard people or they had a babysitter come even though they were stay-at-home mom, I did not understand it. It felt like an entire world to me, an entire different world I'd never heard of. And to be honest with you, I was a little judgmental about it, a little self-righteous about it, thinking I would never spend my money on things that I can do myself. But now I've changed. I do believe wholeheartedly that a lot of things on our list that we do all day, every day, don't have to be done by us. Of course, there are things that should and we want to and we value that, we prioritize that. But there are many things that we don't have to do on our own. I also felt this the first time we hired someone to help clean our house. My husband had been prodding me to do it for months. We had four kids, six and under, including a brand new baby. I was buried under a deluge of dishes and toys. My husband is a busy surgeon, so he wasn't physically around enough to be much help. Still, I thought, if I could just figure out a better system, I could take care of the kids and the house. Wasn't that my job as a full-time mom? 
My husband was all for outsourcing, and he brought up some great points. For one, if we were hiring a nanny to take care of all four of our kids, I wouldn't also expect her to take care of the cooking, cleaning, and laundry. Really, to do a good job with the workload I had at the time, it would have required several people working together. He said if I still wasn't convinced, I could think of hiring a housekeeper as outsourcing the contribution he wished he could be making if he didn't work so much. Neither of us wanted him to spend the little time he had with the family doing chores. Now that I'm older and wiser, I realize I didn't even need those justifications. The fact was, I needed help, and it was a great strategic decision to get some. There's nothing wrong with getting help when you need it. I now know that most of the guilt we feel about outsourcing is entirely in our heads. We make it all up. A lot of the things we spend our time doing could be done just as well or better by someone else, and maybe some of it doesn't need to be done at all. I'm definitely in favor of relaxing our standards and embracing the chaos of the season we're in. There will be plenty of time to have sparkling floors when our kids are grown. While we're losing the guilt, let's also get rid of embarrassment and judgment. Be honest about what you outsource with others. There's no need to be embarrassed about hiring a housekeeper as long as we're not rubbing it in someone's face. It can be very reassuring for a friend to know that the reason your house looks immaculate is that you paid someone else to do it. On the other hand, don't judge others for outsourcing things you don't choose to outsource. I've been guilty of this myself, especially when I lived in the same school boundaries of an extremely affluent neighborhood in Florida, where even stay-at-home moms had nannies. Everyone was astonished that I had three children at the time and no help. The next perceived barrier to outsourcing is budget. But I first started outsourcing in earnest when my husband started his surgical residency. Since I had quit my job by then, and he made very little money, all our outsourcing at the time had to be free. This plan involves lots of teamwork with other friends in my same situation, cooperative outsourcing. We outsourced childcare to each other, organizing babysitting swaps and playgroups. We outsourced meal prep, synchronizing calendars and scheduling joint dinners. We painted each other's houses, planted each other's gardens, and took turns teaching fitness classes. Outsourcing does not have to be expensive. As we talk about different things moms outsource in this episode, we'll always start with the least expensive option and move up from there. But before we get into that list, let's talk about strategy for a minute. Years ago, my mom accurately identified my life motto as, I can do that. If I see something that needs to be done, my first inclination is to learn how to do it and do it myself. Resourceful? Yes. Stupid? Also yes. With this strategy, it often takes me at least twice the time, usually much longer, to do a worse job than someone who actually knows what they're doing. A smarter strategy is taking a look at our priorities, our resources, and our abilities, and determining what to do ourselves and what to outsource. For this exercise, it's useful to list tasks you currently spend your time doing, things you feel like you should be doing but aren't, and things you want to be doing but haven't made time for. I suggest making three separate lists, actually one for managing your household, one for parenting, and one for personal development. Often, we confuse household management with motherhood, but once you parse them out, those household management tasks usually become the most obvious things to outsource. Yes, we have to make sure our kids are fed and clothed and sheltered, but the essence of being a mom is about developing relationships, teaching them, and coaching them. And I'm not overlooking the fact that moms aren't the only people in charge of parenting or household management tasks. Of course, if you're married or otherwise co-parenting, these tasks will be divvied up according to your situation among you, your spouse, and your kids when they're old enough to help. But division of labor inside your family is a whole can of worms we'll save for another episode. Maybe more importantly, we should figure out what parts of motherhood and household management we enjoy and what we really don't. What part of motherhood gives you a sense of fulfillment and identity and what tasks could easily be done by someone else? Other people, like people who work in a restaurant, can make food for your family. Other people can scrub your toilet. But maybe you're the very best person to snuggle up with your daughter and introduce her to Anne of Green Gables. You're the one who knows how to pacify your tantruming toddler or teach your son how to apologize to his friend. If you want to take a deep dive into this, I highly recommend taking Rachel Nielsen's workshop, Declutter Your Motherhood. She offers this periodically both online or in person. You may know Rachel as the host of the 3 and 30 podcast. I'll let you know when the next one is coming up. I went to one last fall, and it was so great. In the workshop, she had us examine our motherhood, Marie Kondo style, writing down everything in our metaphorical motherhood closets, 
examining them one by one and only putting back in what we wanted to keep. My sister-in-law, Heather Kellersberger, is one of the most capable and resourceful people I know. She can clean and organize a house like you wouldn't believe. She can fix anything and has a black belt in Ikea. But even though she can do everything herself, she doesn't. I think it's like a Venn diagram almost of time, money, and and talent, you know. So your resources versus what you're good at, too. Um, so I I feel like I'm good at cleaning, but don't have the time or the desire. So I outsource that. Where other things, like, I know I'm not very good at. Like, we are just about finished with building a home, and we hired designers to kind of help us pick out all of our finishings and, you know, the tile and wall color and all of that. And I did that because um, it, it saved us a lot of time, but also they have a talent for design that I don't have. And I wanted my house to look really nice. So that's an area that I outsource because I don't have the talent there. Another thing that I've outsourced is at one point I was outsourcing my fitness plan where I was meeting with a trainer and they were um, giving me a meal plan and a workout plan each week. And for me, it was the motivation and the accountability that I needed to make some changes in my life where doing it on my own, I like wouldn't be as, as committed to it because I didn't have that investment of time and money. So I think for a strategy for when you, when you outsource it, like what are you really good at and you need to like spend your time doing versus versus where you don't have the time or the natural ability or talent and outsourcing those things. And then it also depends on money too. Like do I spend my precious weekend time cleaning my house or do I spend, spend my precious weekend time playing with my – little boy and my husband. Um, And for me, it's kind of, you know, I work full time. So having time is my most precious resource. Heather is a senior manager of industry marketing at Adobe. And much of her outsourcing strategy is informed by her experience in the business world. At work, there's some things that I'm responsible for doing, but we outsource it to an agency and I manage the agency to do, you know, work for, for our team. In an article for Inc. Magazine, Michael Alter, CEO of Tybar, identified five questions to ask when deciding whether to outsource. Not all of them are applicable to moms, but here are a couple that are. First, is the task at hand a primary service or offering from your business? If not, don't waste valuable time on it. Do what you do well. Is it a commodity, something someone else can do better and more efficiently? Are the costs of the service lower than what it would take in time and manpower to get it done in-house? Another breakthrough in the way I thought about outsourcing strategy came from the outsourcing episode I mentioned earlier from the Best of Both Worlds podcast. A lot of the time when people are thinking about outsourcing, you know, beyond childcare, the first thing they think about is, oh, I should hire a cleaning service. And that can work. But the thing is, what I've found happens for a lot of people with the cleaning service is that they have a cleaner house but it doesn't actually save them time because what, you know, the cleaning service will do if they're there, you know, once a week or once every two weeks, we'll do a deep clean of the house and that's great. But if you weren't vacuuming every room all that often anyway, or dusting all the baseboards that often, like then you're not saving time. Again, it's just a cleaner house, which could be great, but it's not what took your time. A lot of the stuff that takes the time is going to have to be outsourced to a person. And so the things like laundry, cooking or shopping, loading the dishwasher, loading the sort of dishwasher the everyday and recurrent the, the daily pickup, the cleaning, the kitchen, you know, things like that. If that is what is taking most of your time. And I'm guessing if you are a normal person running a normal household, that is what is taking your time. That has to be sort of outsourced individually to a person. Again, this goes back to having a clear outsourcing strategy and then making sure the tactics you choose to solve the problem actually do solve the problem. I'm going to take a quick break here to tell you about an exciting project I'm working on, the How She Moms Meal Planning Workshop. I just did my first official run-through of the workshop with my sister-in-law, Ashley, and it was so fun. She's been struggling with figuring out a system to get food on the table and was tired of quesadillas. 
We nailed down a real-world system to help her take baby steps toward gaining more confidence in the kitchen and to stop dreading mealtime. In the class, I'll first walk you through creating a meal planning strategy that fits your family, choosing five top priorities. Then we pick from a long list of tactics used by other moms that will support your strategy and give you some structure. We review case studies of a few different systems, and finally, we get down to the nitty-gritty of logistics, coming up with a step-by-step -step plan that you can implement immediately, along with lists of menu ideas and a full one-month meal plan. When I built this course, I set out to create the class I wish I'd had when I was really struggling with meal planning, and I'm so excited to share it with you. The online version will come out in March. It's time to get into the list of what different families outsource. For the sake of this list, we'll kind of lump motherhood and household management together. Even though, as we talked about before, I recognize that these are not the same thing, and household management is definitely not just up to the mom. Also, I don't count assigning tasks to other members of your family as outsourcing. That's just delegating. So let's start with a big one, child care. One of the big wake-up calls when you become a mom is just how intense the seemingly simple task of supervision can be. Someone always has to be at least in the same house as the baby, and this lasts years and years until that blessed day when your oldest child is old enough to babysit. The cheapest babysitter is the TV, once a kid is old enough. Of course, I'm not saying that you should sit your kids in front of the TV all day and go about your business, but let's be real. Sometimes mom just needs an uninterrupted shower. Then there's extended family. Some of us are blessed to live near extended family who are willing and eager to watch our kids for free. So this is another great budget option. Obviously, the key here is not to abuse it, so the goodwill will continue. The majority of my childcare outsourcing has always been swapping with other moms. I have two going on at the moment, with different friends on different days of the week. So one Monday, my son's friend comes to our house to play in the afternoon. The next week, my son goes over to his house. And I do the same thing on Wednesdays with another friend. It's nice to make a regular schedule so you can actually plan what you're going to do when you're the one with time off. Swapping childcare isn't exactly free, since you repay in kind, but no cash actually exchanges hands. Another twist on the babysitting swap is a three-way swap, or what I call the power of threes. I once had a great swap going with two friends where two of us would go on a long bike ride together while the other one watched all three of our kids, and then we'd rotate. The magic of this was that we got to bike two out of every three swaps, and we always had someone fun to bike with. You can do this with couples as well. Mackenzie Wade switches off babysitting for another couple for date nights. Once a month, she watches their kids while they go out on a date, and vice versa. Another free solution is to start or join a babysitting co-op. When I did this, my group used an app with a somewhat complicated point system. When we needed or wanted someone to watch our kids, we'd send out a group text and anyone who was available would respond. We'd give them points for watching the kids, which they could then use to have other co-op members watch their kids. It was nice just to have a large group of friends to ask, and I liked that you could just respond to the requests when it was convenient for you. My sister used a similar system, but they used popsicle sticks instead of points. And then there's rotating playgroups. It's nice to have a regularly scheduled playgroup so you know you'll have a set time each week to be kid-free. It's totally worth the chaos when it's your turn to host. I always started this at age three. Any younger and multiple kids are a lot to handle. For three-year-olds, four or five kids is the right number for me, but I know that's different for every mom. Then there are mother's helpers. Sometimes when my kids were younger, I would just find a 10-year-old who could entertain my kids while I was still home. They're young enough to enjoy playing with your kids and old enough to be helpful. Plus, they're thrilled with like $5 an hour. This was especially helpful when I was giving piano lessons to my older kids. I needed someone to keep the littles at bay, and it worked great. Molly Liggett has six kids, and her house was crazy in the afternoons after school. Molly just didn't have enough hands to take care of everyone's needs, get them where they needed to go, and get dinner on the table. So she hired a high school girl who comes two days a week to help with homework, piano practice, and taking care of the younger kids. It's been a game changer. And then you have just regular babysitters. Outsourcing babysitters can range anywhere from a teenager on a weekend night to a live-in nanny. Prices have gone up a little since I was a teenager and used to babysit for $2 an hour, but ask other moms in your area to get a feel for the going rate. When you need longer, more regular childcare, typical options are obviously daycare, preschools, before and after care at schools, or in-home caregivers such as nannies or au pairs. As a bonus, sometimes in-home caregivers are willing to take on some of the household tasks as well. Here's Heather again. So we recently hired a new nanny, and I 
went out to a website called Sitter City and, you know, did a bunch, I did probably like 12 interviews to find a nanny. And during the interview process, the girl that we hired, she said, I just want to make your life easier so that when you come home from work, you have time to spend with your little boy instead of having to cook and clean and do all that. So if I can, you know, do meals for you and she's been great. She's like thrown in loads of laundry for me without even asking. She just sees what needs to be done and starts doing it. So that was like the clincher for me when we wanted to hire her was because that's what I was looking for was someone a to take care of our little boy and make sure like he was happy and healthy and just having fun. My mom wasn't there. And then secondly to, you know, pick up the slack around the house and make things easier for me. So it's been great when I've come home and like dinner's made or the laundry's been started. So it's just, it's been really great. The next outsourcing category is food. Most of us leave the majority of the fruit and vegetable growing and pig slaughtering to other people and start our food outsourcing journey at the grocery store. For this, online ordering with either drive up or delivery have changed my life. No more children begging for everything on the shelves. Now I only step inside a grocery store for odds and ends. Otherwise, I just drive up and the groceries get loaded right into my van. And pickup at Walmart is totally free. And then there's the actual cooking part. There's a wide range of how you can outsource in the cooking department. The cheapest option is just buying prepped ingredients. It saves you a little time to buy pre-prepped meal kits at grocery stores or just prepped ingredients like pre-chopped fruits and veggies or pre-marinated meat. You can also buy ready-made meals at the grocery store, obviously, Uh, frozen meals like lasagna or taquitos or any of those little things that you can throw in in a pinch. And then there are meal delivery services such as Blue Apron, Plated, or HelloFresh. These companies send you all the ingredients all together, and then you just have to cook it up. I've never tried these, mostly because it's not in our budget for a family of seven, but I know people who've loved them. There are also places like Citrus Pear, that allow you to come in, make a whole bunch of meals ahead of time, and then go home and stick them in your freezer. You can also do meal exchanges. For a while, a lovely neighbor and I each took one day of the week and cooked for both families. It was so fun and efficient, and it infused my menu with fresh ideas. I miss you, Jill. And then you always have the option of going to a restaurant. Of course, it's more expensive, but everyone needs a night off sometimes. With my big family, I don't love going out to eat because we're just kind of crazy and messy. So I usually order in once every couple of weeks when I just don't have the time or inclination to cook. And then, if you want to get really fancy and really expensive, you could also hire a private chef. Doesn't that sound like a dream? Okay, now on to cleaning. This is another area where you can set up swaps. Trade weeks with a friend and deep clean your houses while the kids play. It's more fun to clean with a partner. Sarah Engbretson and her friend used to clean each other's houses and switch off each week. So Sarah would clean her friend's house while her friend watched all the kids at Sarah's house, and then they'd switch off. It was easy for Sarah to put off cleaning her own house, but when she had a set date to be there for someone else, it made her accountable. Plus, she actually looked forward to the quiet time just cleaning and listening to a podcast or audiobook. And her kids loved the play date. And then, of course, you can hire cleaners even if it's just occasionally. This was my favorite baby shower gift I ever got. A bunch of friends pitched in to have a service come clean my house before one of my babies came. It was so nice to just have a fresh, clean slate. Since then, I've hired two different women to clean my houses in two different cities, and I was lucky enough to hire good friends both times. In both cases, they help me wherever I am, and we often clean together. If I need someone to help do dishes and pick stuff up, that's what we do. If something needs a deep clean, that's what we do. Currently, I help less because I use the time to get my writing and recording done. Big shout out here to Belinda Guerin and Julie Cornwell. They're such great friends, even though they know all my dirty secrets. Let's move on to clothing. Technically, if you don't spin your own wool and sew your own clothes, you're outsourcing. But here are some additional options. First is ironing. This is another thing I outsourced early in our marriage. My husband did his residency at Mayo Clinic, where they were required to wear dress shirts every day. Hooray for dry cleaners. 
You can also hire somebody to do all of your laundry. They can either come in and do it for you at your house, or someone can pick it up and deliver it to you all fresh and clean. I've never tried either one of those, but it sounds like a dream. As for shopping for clothes, there are actually now a lot of options for this. My neighbor Wendy Sanders swears by Trunk Club, but there are also other services that send you custom-picked clothes, you choose what to keep, and you send back the rest. My personal favorite way to outsource shopping is hand-me-downs. My kids have benefited greatly from friends who've given us their outgrown clothing, not to mention the clothes they pass down among each other. And actually, most of my wardrobe are hand-me-downs as well, from a very generous friend who gives me all her hand-me-downs. She has great taste, and I don't have to go shopping, which I really don't like to do. Thank you, Adrian. And then there's education. If you send your kids to a public or private school rather than homeschooling, you're outsourcing most of your kids' education. If you homeschool, you probably at least outsource the curriculum. I always started my kids' education with a preschool co-op. That's the inexpensive way to do preschool. Everyone takes a turn teaching. Sometimes we bought inexpensive curriculum packets, and sometimes we just made it up as we went. You can also obviously outsource music lessons. I taught my kids piano until it became too much of a battle, but now I'm very happy to send them to another teacher. And of course, there's sports. My children would be hopeless klutzes if I were in charge of their physical education. Thank you to all the coaches who've helped them over the years. I haven't actually hired tutors yet, but that's something I'm thinking about. This is another great way to outsource. You can even outsource teaching your kids life skills. In her book, The Parenting Breakthrough, Marilee Boyack talks about how she enlisted the help of family and friends to teach her kids life skills like cleaning, fixing flat tires, etc. Sometimes kids learn much better from someone else. In one of my very favorite episodes of the Family Looking Up podcast called How to Have the Best Summer with Our Kids, Jenny Layton shared a great outsourcing idea she uses with her kids in the summer. When I had a teenager that was not old enough to work yet, so we're talking that 12, 13, 14 age range, when social media and the screens can be a huge, huge trap, right? And, and you don't want them sleeping till noon and then on their phones or on devices all day. So really, they're not old enough to work yet. So it, encountering a summer like that with one of my young teenagers, she's a real creative little thing. And I, that's not a gift that I have. I know I'm not a really good crafty kind of mom. And so we talked about some of the things she'd like to learn. And she loves makeup and she loves cake decorating and decorating and all these kinds of things that crafting that I can't do. So we reached, we reached out to friends and family who are good at those things. I have a friend who's an amazing makeup artist. So we arranged several appointments for the summer for her to go and learn new makeup techniques and nail techniques. And then I have a sister-in-law who's an amazing cake decorator. And so we arranged a few times my daughter was able to go and make this beautiful fondant golf cake for my husband for his birthday. And that was such a fun thing. And so um, I had another friend who owned a cupcake business. And so she was able to go work with her several times throughout the summer. Those gave her exciting things that she could look forward to. And it did take some time on my part to arrange that. But what was so cool was she woke up with some purpose in the day. I love this idea so much. In fact, after listening to this, two friends and I did a summer swap where I taught singing and put together a musical group for all of our children. One friend taught cooking classes and another one taught art classes. It was really fun and really free. Another thing you can outsource, if it's just not your thing, is reading stories. I really love reading to my kids, but sometimes it's just not an option and you have to outsource. For our parents, this meant Teddy Ruxpin. For us, sometimes audiobooks, podcasts, and sites like Storyline Online are the only way the kids are going to get that bedtime story. And story time at the library can also be considered free outsourcing. There are lots of other chores around the house that you can outsource, especially outdoor chores like snow shoveling, mowing, yard work, window washing, and gardening. One year, I outsourced my kitchen garden by joining a local farm co-op. For the inside of your home, you can hire decorators, painters, organizers, electricians, contractors, you name it. Even things like auto pay for your bills count as outsourcing. I love living in the digital age, so I don't have to remember to pay bills. One of the dreamiest ideas for outsourcing is to outsource potty training. Often, if you use a daycare, they'll do the potty training for you. But you can also hire people to actually come into your home and potty train your child. It's not cheap, but a girl can dream. 
Angie Bevan's mother actually gave her the invaluable gift of potty training all of her children. Amazing. We've already established the fact that I don't cut my husband's hair, and I've gone back and forth about taking my kids to cheap salons or cutting it myself, but I've put them all through enough bad haircuts by now that I'm actually not so bad at it, so I mostly cut my kids' hair myself these days, but outsourcing haircuts makes a lot of sense. Another place I'm sure most of us outsource is with health care, taking our kids to the doctor or dentist at least once a year. But there are a lot of other things we can do to outsource our health, like joining a gym, for example, or hiring a personal trainer or a nutritionist. And let's not forget carpooling. What would we do without the ability to carpool to activities, birthday parties, and for the people who have enough spare seats to school? I'm sure there are so many great ways to outsource that I've totally missed here. But the point is, to get you thinking and look at what you're doing, figure out how you want to prioritize your time, and then get creative about both what you can outsource and how you could make it work for your schedule and budget. If you're deliberate about it, you can free up time to focus on your priorities, like connecting with your family and building those relationships. Thank you for listening to the How She Moms podcast. If you like it, tell a friend. The bigger the community, the more ideas. There are lots of ways you can add your ideas to the How She Moms community. We have a new Facebook group where we share ideas about upcoming topics and help each other solve problems we're facing in motherhood. You can also follow How She Moms on Instagram for quick tips and ideas. And you can go to howshemoms.com where you'll find transcripts of episodes and lots of other great resources. Special thanks to my mom, Susan Singley, for recording my theme music. She played this song all the time when I was growing up, and to me, it's the soundtrack of motherhood.